Welcome Minecrafters. Today we are going to discuss the Ethonian Hopper Clock. Alright, so you might ask, what is an Ethonian Hopper Clock? Well first, it's a resident clock. And what a resident clock is, is it's just a circuit that time and time again outputs a resident pulse. So it could be a certain interval, it could be a random interval, doesn't really matter. As long as it repeatedly gives out an output over a certain length of time. So that's what a clock is. Now an Ethonian hopper clock is a type of clock. So let me demonstrate what it does. So I put in a stack of resin dust and then these pistons shift this way. And then all this redstone is draining from this hopper into here. And then once all the redstone ends up in this hopper, you will see that this will switch back and then it will go this way. There you go. So what can we do with this? Or first, how does it work? So as I was saying, all these items, we put all these items into a s one hopper. So we'll put all this into here. Now what's happening is this hopper is currently locked by this resident block. So it can only receive, it can't send. So the reason it can receive is because this hopper is pushing the items into here. So it's being forced to receive all these blocks. Now while it's doing that, this is slowly draining and then once all of the redstone in here is gone, this will turn off and then this will retract a block and move it over here so then it will lock this hopper. And then this hopper will feed all of its items into here and it keeps doing that back and forth. So the more items you have in here, the longer it takes for it to update or for it to give out a resident pulse. Now, a few ways you can take a resident output from this is one, you could just take a resident dust line from the block of redstone. You could take a comparator output if you want. Or, I do this a lot, which is take an observer output. So every time this does shift, this updates and sends out a pulse. So that's how you can use this as a resident clock. Like most resident contraptions, there's more ways than one to make it. And here we have another way to make it. So say you can't fit that into your contraption. Well, you can build it vertically like this. So this does the same thing, locks the hoppers with the rest of the block, and these comparators are powering each piston. So I'm going to put in a half a stack of rest and dust. And another thing you can do, which this is very helpful, is let's say we let's say you have all these slots filled, but it's still not enough time. Well, you can have another one over here, which actually, if you put in these, every time this shifts over, one item is allowed passage because this will turn off and on really quick. Quick enough to allow only one of these. So then this will go extremely slow. I mean, very slow. Like this, this can take forever. So yeah. And this works just like that one, except it's only allowed to push and pull items or actually only push items every so often when this turns on and off. So that, here's a, f so here's an alternative to that design. All right, so as you might recall, I have been talking about the Ethonian hopper clock and how it has the ability to have long delays between intervals. But what I forgot to mention is the fact that it's extremely customizable. So you can have short delays or long delays, or delays that are exact to like actual seconds. So right here, we have this billboard. And it's a villager billboard, because villager head. And it's basically telling you where there's a village. Now, as you can tell, there was this arrow right here that flashes every so often. And the reason it does that is because there's an Ethereum hopper clock making sure that it only activates every once in a while like it just did there. And reason being is if you're on say a big server you would want this say this is like an add to maybe your shop, your base, whatever 
You don't want this to be flashing all the time. And if people will hate you, because it'll cause a lot of lag. So, if maybe if you weren't on such a huge server, you could have fewer items in there and have this go on and off a bit more often. And that's what's great about Ethan and Hopper Clocks, is that you can add one more resin dust and just make it a little bit longer. It's extremely customizable in how long you want it to be. So like for servers with lots of people, this will take a long time, and for servers with small amounts of people, you could have it turn on and off more often. So that's what's great about Ethereum Hop Clocks, is the fact that they're customizable clocks. So that's one use for the Ethereum Hop Clock. There are many more, but it really depends on what contraptions you're building. Because many resting contraptions do require resting clocks. Alright, now that we know how to use all this, there's one final issue. We don't know how to build it. But it's actually not that hard. So first, you need two sticky pistons and then a two block gap in the middle of them. And make sure they face each other, else it won't work. So then put a block of redstone, just one block of redstone in one of these spaces. And then you put two hoppers running into each other right next to this empty space and block. Now you put two resin comparators coming out of these hoppers and next to these pistons, running into a block, and then redstone behind the piston. And same for the other side. And then put in stack or however many items you need. And there you go. Alright. That works, but what if I need it to be vertical? And, okay. Maybe you don't have enough room. Well, there's a solution to that too. It's actually very similar to that. All you have to do is you just have to move the hoppers underneath these pistons, put a comparator on each side of the hopper, like you did there, put a block, and then put the rest on top of the block going into the piston. Same for both sides. And then you just put in, put in items. And there you go. And now, if you want to have a really long delay, you can put two comparators detecting these two hoppers and running into two more hoppers of the next Etho hopper clock. So there you go. That's how to build an Ethonian hopper clock. I hope you enjoyed today's episode about Ethonian hopper clocks. They're very useful and I use them a lot. So I hope that you go into one of your worlds and experiment with, with them because that will help you understand them along with this video. I hope you enjoyed and catch you in the next episode of Understanding Redstone.